Israel has said in the last hour that they have, quote, almost completely dismantled the leadership of Hezbollah with that strike last night. But of course, it wasn't just the leadership of Hezbollah caught in that strike. The health minister of Lebanon said this afternoon that seven women and three children also lost their lives. This is now the deadliest strike on Beirut since the 2006 war between Israel and Hezbollah. And there is real fear of escalation. That fear is compounded by the crumbling state of Lebanese infrastructure. Compared to 2006, the economy is on its knees. The health the health ministry is not able to cope with what war may bring. The eyes of everyone in Lebanon now is on both Israel and Hezbollah for whatever major moves they may make next. Grief for what's gone before and fear for what may lie ahead. By this morning, the hope of finding any more survivors had all but disappeared. Militarily, what you're looking at was a success for Israel, claiming the life of a senior Hezbollah special operations commander and at least 10 members of an elite unit within the group. This neighborhood is a well-known Hezbollah stronghold, but theirs are not the only lives that walk these streets. This is an area full of children, he tells me. We were sitting, I went down to see what happened, then I saw the bodies on the street. There is a terror in the people, he says now. They are afraid. Their fear, a full-blown war, many more airstrikes like this. The building that was struck was just behind here. It is entirely surrounded by residential blocks. Now, Israel say this was a targeted strike, but unleashing this level of devastation on an area this densely populated means it's nigh on impossible to avoid civilian casualties. These buildings are filled of civilians were hit by Israeli airplanes, Israeli rockets. They, are, they said that they were hitting a leader of our Rodwan force. That's true, but it's not a hit, a single hit for this leader. There are 35 civilians dead in this massacre. By this evening, the death toll had reached 37. The target of this strike was Ibrahim Akil, a senior leader in charge of the Hezbollah arm responsible for cross-border operations into Israel. Another humiliation for the group, another security infiltration that earlier this week saw their pages and walkie-talkies explode, killing at least 37 and wounding nearly 3,000. I think on the long run, whenever you look around, if you're a Hezbollah member, you look around, many of the people around you will only have one eye or they won't see, which is an earnest reminder of what is at stake. And ultimately, people will doubt the equipment that, is, that Hezbollah are giving them because at the end of the day, no one will dare shoot a gun because they might be afraid it might blow up in their face. And this is, for me, more devastating and more damaging to Hezbollah than the killing of its leader because the killing of its military leader is business as usual. These people are military folks and they might die while fighting. This afternoon, Israeli airstrikes continue to rain down on southern Lebanon. And above the skies of northern Israel, Israeli interception rockets shot from the skies missiles fired by Hezbollah. But so far, there has been no large-scale retaliation for last night's attack. You've lived here for 40 years. You've lived through an awful lot. But are you surprised by what happened here last night? Honestly, honestly, no, he says. I expect more escalation. Funerals for the fallen this afternoon, coffins carried draped in Hezbollah flags. But in the coming days, there will be many more for the non-combatants, the civilians, the collateral damage of this growing conflict. Paul McNamara in Beirut. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to Lebanon's Minister of Environment, Nasser Yassin. He's also the coordinator of Lebanon's National Disaster and Crisis Response Committee. I began by asking him for his reaction to yesterday's strikes by Israel. The uh, Israeli occupied forces uh, have been in aggressive mode for decades in Lebanon, but we've seen new shapes recently. The last week, we've seen an unprecedented, unseen uh, uh, attack on 
people carrying pagers, beepers, indiscriminate in many ways, violating international humanitarian law, uh, violating the Geneva Convention. The government of Lebanon is hosting an organization called Hezbollah, which is using its rockets to target civilians in northern Israel, 60,000 of whom have had to move out of their homes. And that's why they've launched this attack this week, in order to stop those attacks from continuing. Lebanon also has more than 115,000 displaced from the southern uh, 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 towns and villages on the borders. We are actually uh, want to respect 1701, the UN resolution that actually uh, was issued in 2006 after an Israeli war mm. at that time. And this is the uh, position of the government uh, to get back the Lebanese displaced into their villages and towns and to get the UN and the Lebanese army to patrol the borders. But you're not in a position to stop Hezbollah, are you? They can do as ever they please. You really have no jurisdiction over them. They're acting like a state within a state. Well, uh, uh, Lebanon has uh, historically uh, resistance, mo resistance movements uh, due to the Israeli occupation for decades. And uh, it's very clear when Israel stops breaking and violating the sovereignty of Lebanon and all the UN and international resolutions and conventions, uh, this will stop. But Nasser, Iran is using Hezbollah as its long arm to attack Israel from Lebanese territory. So what are you going to do? What can you do to stop Hezbollah from doing that? Hezbollah is uh, part of uh, the Lebanese parliament. They're, they have a, a significant block in parliament. But Always dependent on Iran. And dialogue. They, they, they have their connections, as many groups in Lebanon have their connections. Would you call on Hezbollah to exercise restraint at the moment, however humiliated they might have been by these pager and walkie-talkie attacks? You know, the Lebanese government... Uh, uh, has been in dialogue uh, directly or indirectly uh, with Hezbollah. Uh, Lebanon has always been saying officially uh, and through different channels that all what we seek is actually mm. uh, to stop this war. You know, you're in a very tough position. You have been for a very long time. You've got a financial crisis. You've got more than, I think, a million and a half Syrian refugees still living in your small country. Um, You've got, yeah, I don't think you've got a president at the moment. There's a political vacuum. Are you becoming a failed state? We continue to take the responsibility to get along to protect people. But definitely, definitely we're under a lot of strain. Uh, what we see is a sophisticated, aggressive uh, war machine that's actually been ongoing for months without any restriction, without any... This discrimination, it's indiscriminate. The United States and the UK have both been calling for restraint ever since October the 7th. Clearly, the Israelis haven't been listening. Hamas hasn't been listening. Hezbollah's not listening. I mean, is there anyone outside your immediate region who has the power to stop this from getting worse and becoming a wider war? This is a regional war. It's a, it's a, a new generation of wars, as we've been seeing. And this necessitates the uh, presence and the push from the international community and international actors beyond mm. just, you know, the talk. There needs to be some work from the international actors mm. and international players uh, for that matter.